Hello, and welcome to Chapter 2 of the History of Pondville. My name is Richard Connors, and with me is Betsy Whitney, who is our local historian and author of The History of Pondville, and a wonderful book. Good to see you, Betsy. Good to see you, You got all your Richard. paraphernalia? I have all You're my ready to paraphernalia. Go? I am ready. Because today's the day. Today is the day. We are going to day. take a tour of some of the uh, more interesting parts of Pondville, the historical, all the things that you've written about in your great book. By the way, we've had great response to this book and to the show. Well, I'm actually very thrilled. I've never done anything like this before, uh -huh. and uh, it has been received with much enthusiasm. I'm thrilled. Well, someone said yesterday while I was at Jane and Paul's farm, you and Betsy must be real good friends. You get along so well. <laughs> and that's true. It is true, and we've had fun with our practice Haven't sessions. Haven't we, huh? Yes. We certainly have. You already knew that I talked a lot. <laughs> so today, so. folks, we're going to uh, stroll away after we had a little talk about the house that Betsy Whitney lives in on Valley Street, this very historical house. And then we're going to... Uh, Saunter take about, take a look at other spots. Now, the first thing I wanted to do, Richard, was show you and the audience a hand-done plaque showing the Pond coat of arms that was conferred upon John Pond in 1506. And I had this done, oh, probably a year ago, and this hangs inside my kitchen. Beautiful. And the house that we're standing, and I've got this, the house that we're standing in front of, which is our house, was lived in by Deacon Smith and Jerusha Pond in the mid-1800s. However, it was built in 1750 by Jacob Pond. And I did ask you and Katie if I could bring along a picture that shows the position of the house in the 1960s. While you... you can hold that and we will remind the readers and the viewers where Pondville is. This is a photograph that was given to me that was taken as I said in the late 1960s and it shows this house much closer to the street but facing actually diagonally and it really faced more of Old Pond Road than Valley Street. Charlie Sharon who owned this land um, as of probably the late 50s, early 60s, he moved the house from its original place back and he straightened it out and it faces squarely Valley Street. New foundation and everything since okay. it was built, obviously. Now, when I yeah. was a kid, this house I thought it faced the way that it does now. I know, and you and I talked about that, and you just, and as a matter of fact, Polly, who's in my book, and we referred to her the last time, she lived here in 1946 to 1948, right before the Trenniths, and she did not remember the house facing diagonally. No. She kept telling me there was a door on the side of the house. And I said, you know what? I think because the house was facing diagonally, you're thinking that the front door was on the side of the house. We're not sure. But I, hate, I hate to be a skeptic, but I like to remember it. You like to up. remember it that <laughs> way. This way, but yep. obviously you proved me wrong once again. Well, <laughs> not, not always proving you wrong, and I, didn't, um, I had not been able to see any pictures of how the house looked before I moved here until one of the members of the Plummer family who lived on Hill Street brought me that um, photograph uh -huh. last May. So 
So there you have it. There I have it. So okay. shall we show the folks Just a refresher. All right, you can hold the bottom one. Okay. And I'm going to hold the top one. And here's our map of Norfolk. Pretty big compared to this section, the southeast section that I have circled constitutes Pondville. And as we said before, compared to the center of Norfolk, we're way out there. We are it's very indeed. nice. It has its advantages. Okay. <laughs> That's true. We're true. way out there. You yeah. know, uh, in chapter one, we spent most of our time talking about the book, how all the hard effort that you put in to come up with this great book. But today, we're going to just show some of the things that we talked about, you'll actually be able to see in reality, except for the pond home. That's right. That's one of the things that is missing here. Well, the pond home, the Pondville school is yes, gone. Yes, yeah. Um, we won't be down on Route 115, but we will see the abutments on Hill Street, over which the train uh, went. Yep. And let's see, I think those are the sites that are totally gone. But we do have some good pictures, and we do have information to tell the folks who are listening and looking. I think mm -hmm. that uh, this is probably an appropriate time to thank uh, Katie Woodham. Oh, Katie Woodham. Katie has, has done a wonderful. fabulous job in putting this together. She's very not, modest. I see her smiling, but she's <laughs> very modest. Not just filming it, but all of the editing that she did. Oh, include, yeah. And she came up with some great ideas of including pictures wonderful. as she went through the uh, show. So we do appreciate that. And we appreciate NCTV uh, giving us her for the day. Indeed. <clears throat> okay. What do you think? Should we move let's, on to... Let's go right on. Let's walk to the end of the driveway, take a right, and we're going to visit the Cressy Memorial Chapel that was built in 1909. The land was donated by Harriet Pond Cressy to... Uh, have a chapel built in honor of her son. Um, her husband's name was Oliver. They had a son who passed away, not terribly young, but they did make the chapel in his honor. And the chapel was constructed as a place of worship for people who lived in the pond home directly across the street which unfortunately is there no more. Okay. So we decided to start yes. by showing the viewers something that is something there. Something solid, yes. Then we have a picture of the pond home to show um, what it looked like then and how it is now. So let's go. All right, go. shall we go? Yeah. Okay, we'll show. Before we go any further, this trestle block was part of the railroad abutments on Route 115 that were removed in 2010 as part of the Route 115 reconstruction project. Butch Vito was um, the superintendent of the DPW at the time. It wasn't that I was on bended knee or anything, but <laughs> when I talked to Butch, I said, please, oh please, I would like a trestle block to be delivered to my property to stay in all perpetuity as a reminder of the abutments that used to be on Pine Street. And he said, absolutely, there it is. I don't there think, it is. I don't think anybody's going to walk away with the it. The version that you gave me is a little smaller than this. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I wouldn't be able to lift it. Oh, 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 I see what yes, you Yes, you gave me that a piece of I the I gave action. you a piece, because yeah. many, well, if up. not most, of the <clears throat> trestle blocks were broken up into pieces, and um, small pieces, and on Route 115, going toward Norfolk Center, uh, intermittently are two stone walls made out of pieces of trestle block. I would like a sign put at least on one of them. I had a sign made right there yes. talking about the old Colony Railroad bridge abutments for people. Every now and then I will see a car stop and somebody will get out and read this. 
I'm Boy, very impressed. I am impressed. And I know, as I say, they're not going to walk away with my trestle. No one is going to put throw that in the trunk of their car. Huh? No. <laughs> but, you know, a friend of mine's 11-year-old daughter said, Oh, look at Mrs. Whitney's trestle block. Why does Mrs. Whitney want a trestle block? <laughs> Her mother said, well, when you get to know yeah. Mrs. Whitney, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so that's a point of interest. Okay, great. All right. And this is a lovely view of the house. True. Which Katie has already captured. Yeah. Okay, shall we walk around the corner? Okay, we're ready to rumble. Walk. Well, we have to take instructions. <laughs> Katie's good. Okay, we're at uh, the intersection of Valley Street, and this is Old Pond Street. Yep. Now it's called Old Pond Street because. Well, it's called it's called Old Pond Street because until 1931, this was actually Pond Street that would have continued all the way down to Norfolk Center. In 1931, Pond Street was discontinued when Pine Street was put through, which is now Route 115. People used to just call it the throughway. Sure. So Old Pond Street is a dead end street now. Um, it's really more like a paved path. But True. this triangle right here, Richard, has been here f forever. So that's pretty interesting that this is where folks in this section went to Norfolk Center yes. via this road. It was a very zigzag way of <laughs> travel, which is why in the early 30s it was decided to put the throughway going directly uh, to Norfolk Center. Now it wasn't quite that easy. Pond Street did zig and zag in its own way. It's pretty straight now. Okay. So now the people that use it are the people that live down where we're going to go. Yeah, this is a, not a very well-traveled road. I mean, actually seeing that car just go by <laughs> that surprised, surprised me. Too. me. <laughs> um, the Cressy Church is on our right, and at the end of the street where there is, there is a cul-de-sac is a private home, and that's it. That's it. So let's take a walk right okay. down. Before we Valley? do, yeah. in the distance, we're going to come back to it, but in the distance is the old post office. Yes, the, that was, was a private home that was owned by uh, Virgil Pond, and it was sold to a man named Arthur Lovering in the late 1800s. And in those days, when post offices were just getting started, um, actually U.S. post offices. They quite often were in the basement or in a private residence hmm. in the area. The Pondville Post Office was in operation from about 1891 to 1910. We know it closed in 1910. It wasn't in operation for very long and my chapter uh, seven, I believe it is, really goes into detail about the development of post offices in sure. the United States yeah. anyway. So what we're looking at, which is all boarded up now, the house is for sale. It's not lived in. It's really not livable. There are five acres all up next to and behind it. I take care of the grounds. I still mow the lawns at the tender young age of 68. <laughs> I was up there yesterday. I did request that the windows be boarded up, but the street level uh, would have been the entrance to um, the post office that was called the Pondville Post Office. When we go to visit that structure, we will see the store that was called Helen Robbins's shop. There you go. The store there. So that's later. Okay. One thing I think that uh, needs clarification. When yes. we say chapter two, yeah, we're okay. talking chapter two of our show, which is what we're going to do today. It isn't that chapter two of the book, so there's no confusion there. 
it's really uh, part two, whatever you want to call it. We chose to call it uh, chapter two. Well, as I told you, a few of my friends said, oh, your book has 19 chapters. Are you going to have 19 videos? And I said, no, we're should've not. should have said yes. Oh, I should have. <laughs> yes, Hollywood, here we are. Okay, um, off we go. So chapter oh, two, that's okay. Chapter two of our video would cover chapter two through uh, third, well, at least two through eight of my book. Good. Depending on how much we decide is included in a segment. Yes. So there will not be a video chapter for every chapter of the book. So don't worry, folks. <laughs> We're going to combine it all for you. <laughs> We're combining. You've got to read the book, though, in order to really appreciate what we're seeing. But, you know, if you, if you look, check in, watch what we're saying and showing, go back to the book, fine it really sure is. and take a take a ride over here take find out number over. one where Pondville is yes and number two some of the sites that we, I think you'll find it pretty interesting absolutely everybody that's come with us uh, uh, we had uh, Norma, Norma Fruhan and, and her, her husband, husband. Took yes the tour with us and boy they were really into had a it wonderful weren't they huh? time. So yes we invite everybody to come anybody down. who wants to come to Pondville is welcome please do okay let's well. go down to the Cressy Memorial cha Chapel or as uh, Katie goes. <laughs> we get going. We take instructions pretty well. <laughs> yeah. So this road, when I remember it, was pretty well dirt road. We're on our way to Cressy Memorial Chapel, which is just down there, a piece on the right. But behind Richard, this whole section here, very wooded, very overgrown is where, and I think I actually will show, well, I will show this first. This building that was the family home of Lucas Pond in the late 1800s, I think 1899, had been uh, willed, it was inherited by Virgil Pond. It was a very large house. And it stood right there. Now, at that time, a philanthropic group called the King's Daughters and Sons were looking for a place to establish, if you will, a nursing home for the aged of Norfolk County, not necessarily the town of Norfolk, Norfolk County. Mm -hmm. Norfolk, the town, was established in 1870, as we know, but the county was established before that. Virgil, knowing about the king's daughters and sons through his sister Harriet, who I have already mentioned, uh, was offered the family home as the pond home for the aged site. It had to be approved by the state. And two years later, and actually these are attached, I'm okay, this beautiful home stood proudly and majestically right there. It was a large home. It took in, I believe, Oh boy, I can't remember. I will have to go read my chapter eight. <laughs> um, a small number of elderly folks in Norfolk County who had no home, no money, no family, friends, and they became the first residents of the Pond Home for the Aged of Norfolk County. Now, sadly, and I realize that I'm talking about this on our way to it's the okay. chapel, no, it fine. sort I of fell into place. It did indeed. But one of the reasons I wrote the book was to preserve what is left of Pondville. In 1979, 
This is what was left of that beautiful home. And it's gone. It burned down in 1979 after having been deserted for many years. Pretty sad. And I, yeah, it's very, very upsetting, very sad. Quite frankly, I think I would rather look at just nature than a building that was neglected. And I'm hoping that things like this won't happen again. So, we'll continue as we've been trying to do. No, no, this is safe. <laughs> for a little while. We're just doing a little meandering. A That's little good. meandering, <clears throat> which is really what I started doing in 2007, seriously. I had lived here since 1982, but I didn't meander. Here we are. You know, the Cressy Memorial Chapel really um, has not changed much at all. In about 2005, the Mass Historical Commission was hired to do an assessment of Pondville to see if it would qualify as a historic district. I didn't know any of this. Yeah. I was too busy teaching somewhere else. What, that would have been wonderful. But they have strict requirements. And in order to qualify as a historic site or a historic district, you have to fulfill certain criteria. Changes cannot have been made. Uh -huh. Original components of the structure must still be visible. This chapel was the one component of Pondville that would most likely be eligible for mass historical recognition. I do not believe that it was pursued, but Cressy Memorial has retained the most integrity. So um, the book will give you a description of the kind of stones that were used. Um, obviously, uh, parts of it have changed. The door has been replaced. This boulder here, and Katie, if you could, I don't know if it's covered by weeds, it does say the Pond Homestead Camp. And the picture in the book that I took in 2009 or 10, I don't know, um, it goes to show you how things have weathered since then. But that was moved over here. Our friend Larry lives here, loves this place. Oh yeah, this is quite, so a, quite a spot. The residents of the Pond Home would come right out the front door of the building, which would be, Richard, right yep. there, and go right across the street and go right into the Cressy Memorial Chapel. Now, as a kid, I remember uh, you could hear the organ. Oh. You know, of course, it had all of the benches and everything yes. in there that a, a chapel would have, and there was an organ in there, and they were singing. And and you know, at one point, I think the Pondville Cemetery was in charge of the chapel. Yes. It was um, controversial. In 1980, the chapel became a private residence. Yes. And there was, oh, there was yeah. some discrepancy there was. about whether that should be. The first man who lived in this building was required to become a minister. He did. And he mailed in for one. He mailed in to be a <laughs> minister, which gave him tax-free status. It did. Um, but then that was the end of that. Sure. And whoever lives in the house pays taxes. Yep. So the house is on its fifth private owner. Oh, it is. Yes. I didn't. Re I missed. And it still on the has month. the um, balcony inside oh, that you can nice. see. It's been done over. Oh, sure. Um, but boy, does it look so similar to the picture that's in the book. Amen. Um, now, isn't it something to live in that structure? Huh? Oh, yes. That's right. That is so unique. I know. I've made jokes about, oh, you're an angel, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yes. So, as we go down Old Pond Street, we are approaching, in about 150 yards, a cul-de-sac. Back in the day, we would have kept on going. We would have walked right over a small bridge over the Stop River. Uh -huh. And of course, the Stop River was a water source 
um, that was attractive to the early settlers and one of the reasons, the main reason, it was the water and the hay fields and good land for growing uh, crops, good land for grazing. And ducks. Don't forget my ducks. Oh, and ducks. Don't forget of course, my they ducks. didn't come until later. No, that's true. Yep. Much later. And we will get to that in <laughs> chapter three, which will incorporate chapters 14 through 19. Okay. We think. I just don't want you to forget my ducks. I'm not going to forget your ducks. <laughs> I have a lot of little. My personal 25 cent an hour ducks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we we're, we're going to meander. And you know, when I walk down here, you can hear the peepers, you can hear birds, you can hear squirrels scurrying, you can see chipmunks. Well, here we are at the Fairfield House. Yes. Tell us about this. Well, you remember it as the Herd's house? The Herd's lived here, yes. Okay. Along to Charlie Sharon. Well, this house was built in the 1700s. We do know that Nicholas Fairfield lived in this house. Nicholas Fairfield fought in the French War in 1798. He and his wife and family lived here. He had daughters. Uh, we don't know an awful lot about Nicholas Fairfield. But he was a patriot. He is, he was um, buried in the Pondville Cemetery, unrecognized for his service to this yes. country, until I believe it was a, by 1987. Greg yeah. Stahl, the president of the Rentham Historic Commission, had a plaque in, put right on right by his grave, commemorating his service to his country. Now, Charlie Sharon Sr. lived in this house for a time. Um, Charlie Sharon Jr. owned the house uh, much later, in the 40s, when you worked yes. for Sharon Duck Farm. And farm workers, th there were barns oh, yes. everywhere. Uh, workers on the Sharon Duck Farm lived here. Now, by then, yes, because in 1931, this street was discontinued. Now, do you remember this as a cul-de-sac? No. You don't? No, okay. you could go right out to Route 1A. I mean, you still can Yeah, drive. No, but I mean, it, uh, it was a road right out to, uh, because people used to come in off of 1A and park in here. Okay, but the throughway had already gone through. Yes. Yes. But this was still used. It was. It really isn't used very much. It's not supposed to be used at all. Not at all, yeah. But for many years, it was. Um, my friend Kathy and her friend Keith live here. It is a two-family home. It has uh, a young man living in the upstairs, and Kathy lives downstairs. And it's right next to the Stop River. I can hear birds now. I can hear traffic now. Yes, we so can, we have, yeah. yeah. Is it okay for me to mention that there were ducks over there? Have you mentioned that there were ducks <laughs> over there? Yeah. Now, were, were there ducks actually right. down here as over well? They side. were at they my were, house. They were, yes, yes, they were. Hundreds no, of ducks. No, but here was a, to our left, my left, was a big barn. and. It had hay, you know, it, it had the the odor of a barn, which yes. I miss. I don't know if, if you growing up were involved in barns oh, at all. Oh, sure. There were no horses in there or anything. Uh, they stored stuff for the duck farm. Mm -hmm. But it had a loft, and it was just a great place to grow up, to have like a, your own tree house in a sense. And uh, from there we shot all the Germans and Japs that had invaded this particular area during World War II. And with the herd kids, it was a pretty exciting area. There are no bodies left of all those people. No. Someone came and picked them all up, I guess. Yeah, they were all but gone. That was, that was an imagination palace because if it wasn't the war. It was something else that we yes. would think of. And it Jump was, out of the loft as, as yeah. a, safe plane. As a Superman and all of those sort sure of was. things into the hay. Mm -hmm. And there was another barn up beside your house and, and a row of, 
Oh, which of, we'll talk about. Of duck houses. Of uh, the duck houses. You know, what the barn there was the, I've really heard, nice. Yeah, and that barn didn't burn down until oh. the late 50s. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. quite a fire because it was tender dry and it had, you know, hay in it and all kinds and of And part stuff. of the Fieldstone Foundation, and again, we're, we're talking about my house on Valley Street. Um, part of the Fieldstone Foundation is still there. I've Sure. I've gone down there to dig around. There is part, or there is, a big wheel that goes to a wagon. And I have made a simple request to my husband, go get that. I want that. <laughs> it's always think, simple request. I think I'll have to blast. Yeah, but, <laughs> I was going to um, say. Yeah, but again, I didn't know anything really about my house. I knew it was very, very old. That's all I knew. I knew this house yes. was very, very old. Oh, it was. I certainly knew that the post office house was very, very old. That's all I knew. Well, this house, the maintenance on this house was very poor when the herds lived here. Yeah. It was bare floors, rickety. It yes. Was, it was, and it leaked in the winter rain. Uh, it wasn't well maintained, but yeah. it was, it was what it was. and. That was just sort of typical of Pondville back in those days. Nobody had much money. It was a little rickety in Pondville. The whole place. If you went around and looked at some of the homes back yes. then, yes. they weren't palaces no. by any stretch. Some of them were cabins and cottages of people that worked either at uh, Pondville Hospital or came out here in the summer to get away from the heat of the, of the uh, Boston Center. So, you know, it was... On the pay scale of life, it was on the lower rung. But you know, Richard, having you say this and thinking of the interviews that I had with your brother Paul, yeah. a long interview I had with Herbie Hawksley. Oh, yeah, Herbie and Eddie. Who lived yeah. up off of Everett Street. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have indoor plumbing. The interviews I mean, was... with the Kozaks. Yeah. The interviews with you. The interviews... Um, I've had with a few other folks who lived here. Now, you and Paul and Herbie gave me the longest look back. And the happiness. Oh, that was The great. happiness when, when, when I told Herbie that I was going to interview him regarding his memories of Pondville, he wrote about 10 pages. And he, did, he huh? was so emotional and so happy to go back to those days. It was long ago. So it didn't matter if Pondville no, it really was, didn't. No, was rickety. But, but I just, I wanted oh, people to get the, the flavor of, yes. and, you know, and let me say this, the people that lived in Norfolk, Norfolk, like on the center and maybe not City Mills, but in the center of town, these people over here were not high on their uh, wanting to take <laughs> care of them, you know what I mean? It, yeah. Pondville sort of had a fight for whatever it got, and it didn't get much, believe me. But it's, think it's... Of course, it's changed it's now. It's done so well. It has. Yes. And it was, I feel badly that my two boys didn't have the experience of, like, the barn. Yeah. Being in a barn, there's something, as soon as I say it, I, my memories go back, how great, and you can just smell it. It's built into your psyche. You know, as I said in the book, I love my home. I worry about its future, I pray for its existence. All these buildings that were here at one time are no more. I know that's part of life, but it's also part of life to save and preserve. And in my book, in the post office chapter, I have cited a statement made by Theodore, President Theodore Roosevelt when the Antiquities Act was signed into law in 1906 and it talks about preserving our history that this is something that each and every one of us must do and that's why we're doing what we're doing. I'll give you credit. Uh, this house has certainly been yeah. fixed up nicely. It's lovely. And, and they, they, they maintain it. care it's... so much about the landscaping and uh, yep. They seem like nice people. Now, Kathy did just say a little while ago that, you know, she had put the house on the market. Oh. Yeah, she had. 
and she's taken it off. Oh, good, because obviously she cares. Now again, the fact that I came down Pond Street on my knees bearing a free <laughs> copy of the book may have had something to yes, do with yes, it. Yes, that's true. She's in the book, but good. she's she's part of our modern day Pondville family. So Excellent. I think she wants to stay here. The original owner, what did he do? Did he work around here or any idea of what he did? Oh, Nicholas Fairfield. Yes. You know, th I mean, he must have because mm. I wonder what a, uh, we know a very, does. We, we know very little about yeah. his life other than being a master mariner. So I, I can't tell you specifics about Nicholas. No, We're all wondering. searching. Just, yeah. Okay, yeah. now okay. we have a couple of choices. We can go further down and take a peek at the Stop River area. Okay. Or go to the post office. Well, I would love to see the Stop River. Let's do it. Now, when my kids were little, it was called the Babbling Brook. Again, <laughs> I knew nothing about this area. Um, I find out years later it actually is the Stop River that originates in Rentham over behind where the Weber Duck Inn was. Right. And it meanders through Medfield. I believe the Stop River becomes part of a border between Norfolk and Medfield. And eventually it winds its way to the Charles River and eventually the ocean. Okay, so let's go but down and take a peek. But it goes right down there. I, I'm going to not grab my stuff. <laughs> let's go. All right. <laughs> You gotta admit this is a lot. We of fun. did not practice too much, <laughs> did we? <laughs> okay, why don't we uh, move on down the road here, as they say, and as, we'll take yes. a peek at the Stop River. Okay, now we're going to go where it over says posted. where it says posted, <laughs> no trespassing. Right. But we're going to walk down the dirt. Um, path. Actually, it's a cart path. Well, it's it is. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Well, okay. Richard, here we are. Well, here we are at Stop River. At the Stop River. Now, this flows in that direction. In that direction. And it comes from Rentham. Rentham. Mm -hmm. Goes behind where you said the Weber Duck Inn used to be. Correct. Into that pond. Um, well, you know, I've been told by some people that it actually starts in that pond. I'm not sure. I always thought it did. But. Yeah. I don't, but it's either in it or right there but it definitely so starts there it flows along behind where in the old days the weber duck farm was yes uh, back to my ducks yes and uh it came down through there mm -hmm. came under route 115 and goes along through here yes and this is uh for me it brings back memories of mud and getting soaked and having to explain to my mother why i was drenched catching uh, what we call suckers or their carp that used to run through here to uh, spawn, and they were good-sized carp, so we would catch them as kids. Well, this brings back memories of, as I said earlier, um, my stepchildren, so this goes back to the early 80s when they came down to the Babbling Brook to fish for great tuna <laughs> or <Sharks>. sailfish, <laughs> Sharks. maybe an occasional shark. <laughs> Somehow they never came home with anything, and I would say the one that got away but this has always been called the babbling brook many years later i discover it is called the stop, stop river. river yes so um and of course this is a modern version of a cart uh cart path and technically you know this is a pass-through it's not for public use but so it, it came from used. Valley yep. Street, by where we walked down. Oh, well, before. And, oh, yes. yeah, and back it, in the old. Unpaved. Yes. From where the pavement goes at the uh, house up there. Up, right up to Dedham right Street. Right up to Dedham Street. And then one would take a left and then a quick right, similar to how it is now, and continue. So that's the way it was laid out for the horse and buggy. Similarly, Similar. yes. Ah. I mean, it had various zigs and zags of its own. Um, as it went down to Norfolk, what it, what ended up being Norfolk Center. Uh -huh. So, uh, speaking of fishing, I just have to throw this in. At the other end, just by 115, I don't know if there is any more, but there used to be hornpout. 
Oh, no, I don't know anything yeah. about oh, that. Oh, yeah, they, they weren't big. They were just, and we used to fish for those. Now, someone said there was trout in here, but as a kid, we never saw any trout. Okay. That's all that we saw. So that's my story. I'm not going to ask you about any more fishing stories because I, you you've want to told know me how about the a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, where do you want to go now? Let's head up I to... I think we need to turn around and head up to the post office house. I'll second that motion. And then right across Hill Street, um, we can visit the site of the Pondville School that is there no more. And I think that'll wrap it up for today. I think that's a yep. good place to okay, wrap it good. up for today. Good. All right, Katie, okay. we get our uh, selves in motion here, and off we go. This is an interesting street. It, it really is. Well, I tell you, this is uh, so far been a super interesting trip through oh. Pondville. What we've Good. Covered. I mean, I love it. I, I know you. All right, we have transported ourselves from the uh, Stop River, and now we're in front of the old post office. This is located on Valley Street. On Valley Street, it's number 29. And it's pretty well yeah. boarded up now, of course. Yes. To protect the the building itself. So there's quite a history to this. Well, there is, and as we said earlier on our trip, um, this property and house was owned by Virgil Pond, um, built in the middle to late 1700s, and I think Virgil, um, I, th I think I already had said that he sold it to Arthur Lovering, who would be my friend Virginia's grandfather. He bought it from Virgil Pond, and the Pondville Post Office occupied the bottom floor beginning in 1891, lasted only until 1910 when people in Pondville then received their mail from the Rentham yes. Post Office. Yep. I have been in this house many times. Uh, the cellar is dirt and one of these days uh, there's no, there used to be electricity, it's been shut off. Um, I would love to do a little archaeological dig down there and see if I might be able to find a stamp or a letter opener. In the book, you will note that I did locate a postcard that was yes. postmarked yep. Pondville Post Office. So the did they have cubby holes where they got, or could you tell? I I do not have that. They, there's nothing in the cellar that reminds one oh, okay. of a post office, except uh, Virginia told me as a child um, in the basement was, were four sections of wrought iron, what she called a cage, and she remembers her grandfather uh, and his wife, who would be her step-grandmother, selling stamps inside oh. this cage. Now, I have the pieces of the cage in my house. She uh -huh. gave me permission for my husband and I to take that out. That was in the basement. Those are the only pieces it, huh? we have found. But it's, it's pretty... Um, there's quite a bit of material, just possessions, still in the house, in the basement, and one day I would like to go in sure. um, as a member of the Historical Commission and see what I could find. Virginia comes up every now and then and goes inside, fishes around, sure. and sees what she's got in there. And the garage that was adjacent to this building. Now down about where the telephone pole is, um, I don't know, Katie, if you can get that um, what is that, about 25 yards to yeah. the left, was the garage. And unfortunately, oh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, it collapsed under the weight of a very heavy snowstorm. Um, so but there, I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I have kept pictures of this house through the years. And, and I know it's old, it's, it's peeling, um, it has the red X on it, which does not mean it's being knocked down. It means if the building were to catch on fire, firemen must not go inside. Yeah, for their it own would safety. Be for their yeah. own safety. Now, what about yeah. the store? 
Now the store, <coughs> you can see that porch area. Mm -hmm. That was where Virginia's mother, Arthur Lovering's daughter, named Helen Robbins. Many people remember Helen Robbins. Um, she just had a little general store. You could go there for needle and thread, can of soup, some canned goods, dry foods. Oh, what year was that? household things. Well, yes, let me see. Um, Virginia, um, 27, I guess in the 20s, 30s. Yeah, because I don't remember it at yeah. all as a store. But yeah. many people say, oh, Helen Robbins house. And I think of this as Virginia. Sure, of course. Yeah. Virginia's house. So, but it's been... When I moved to Norfolk in 1982, the house was not being lived in full time. Mm. Um, but Virginia has an acute appreciation for the history of the house, an acute appreciation for Pondville, the history of Pondville. And by the way, where we're standing is the site of the general uh, Preston Pond Farm that was right across the street, oh, sure. another pond home, pond family home, that is gone. Um, so, as long as this house is standing, which I hope is for the rest of my life, and I do, you can't really see it, but I do keep a wreath on the front door. I see that, yes. Yeah, and my husband and I make as many repairs as we can. You know something? You have a very understanding husband. Uh, my husband. Nate is one of the and best. And as I say in the book, he'd rather go fishing. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> I could send him down <laughs> to the Stop River. <laughs> but um, I would like to get a sign to put on just a little sign that says one time the Pondville Post Office. I'll have to go through whatever, sure. you know, technical Okay, shall we go to, to school? And yes. Oh, and, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we're going to go to school, and here is an example of a very valuable piece of Pondville history that is gone. However, I was lucky, after the publishing of my book, I was shown by um, some Pondville residents where the front step to the Pondville school still is, that one would step okay. on and go right into the school. So we can pretend it's 1820. Sure. Now, Virgil Pond attended the Pondville school. It was a one-room schoolhouse. Virginia who lived in this house. She was born in this house and mm -hmm. brought up in this house. She remembers seeing the Pondville school um, structure and she said it just looked like a box. Yeah. She remembers it, but Let me I say, don't know when it was. Growing up here, I never knew no, there was a school was there until you, uh, oh, uh, yeah. no, I didn't even know there was one. That there was one. Until you brought it up with Well, your and book. you moved here in 1938? 30. Yeah. 38. Right 30, so it was gone yeah, it was by like then. Four. Yeah, 37, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, all right, I'm we'll just going to... up and go up the street. Well, here we are at the Pondville School. And, and Richard, by the way, you're late for school. <laughs> and I am standing right on the original doorstep to the Pondville School that was built in approximately 1820. In the book, there is... In chapter six about Pondville School, there is a request by the fathers of children in Pondville for a school in Pondville so that their children won't have to travel so far to attend school in another part of town. So this was the doorstep. Down here is another step. Right straight ahead of me is Valley Street, and there have been cars rushing back and forth. Of course, it was very quiet way back in the day. So, now, Richard, are you going to come to school, or are you going to stay right I over there that. and stay out in the yard as long <laughs> as you can? <laughs> Mark me tardy. Um, so the foundation. Well, is any of this part of the foundation? Actually, the plumbers who grew up in that house were here with me this summer 
and they said, see the flat faced yes. rocks? Their, um, their belief is, and it certainly makes sense, that this is part of the foundation. Now, as I said before, Virginia remembers seeing the structure that so being looked a one like a box. Room, so, one room schoolhouse. So it actually don't fall. Whatever nope, I'm fine. And I've been over here several times. Here, down here, it looks like it would be, this would be the back of it, about right here. A how, very small structure. How many children do you think attended at one time? Oh boy. You know, that's, Couldn't be too and many. it's in the chapter. I have just forgotten. Yeah, I me would too. say I around. 10, 12. Yeah, um, I think that's what it was. For a while, after the Pond Home was built, before Cressy Memorial Chapel was built, Virgil had this school, Virgil Pond had this school that he loved uh, um, and, and had gone to school here himself. He had it painted red. Oh, he did had, he? Yes. And I got that information from a 1902 yes. newspaper. Oh, that's right. And that's yeah. in the book. Um, and he borrowed chairs, and this schoolhouse was used as a church, oh. as a little chapel until Cressy a multi, was built. A multi-use yeah. facility. So um, here it is, of course, trees have grown and uh, so the school traffic yard has increased. Now. Yeah. Well, but this school closed in 1893, and all children attended center school. City Mills was still open. In Pondville, you took Mr. Campbell's blue bus from here over to the center of town. And you went to the central center school if you, for whatever grades they were there. If you were in other grades, you got on Mr. Holmes' yellow bus and drove up to City Mills. Oh, and you had school up there. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. McBride, who was one of the greatest teachers. So ever. this color coding went on. It did. I mean, yes, that was it did. the way it was organized. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when I was interviewing Kathy Sharon, her memories of Pondville, she said, "Oh, it was." I said, "Did people refer to Pondville very much in your growing up in your trip?" Oh, she said, "In school, all the Pondville kids line oh, yeah. up over oh, here. Yes, all the yes, Pondville yeah, kids." That's I, true. I, it just sounds wonderful to it me. It was no. It, it really does. You were a marked person. If you came from Pondville, came you from were a Pondvilleite. There's no question about oh, it. Oh, that's great. Well, now I am. I'm now you are. It. Now I am. Betsy, okay. we're going to call it here. We're going to call it here in school. Okay. I think so. Right at school, yes. you look like a very efficient <laughs> school mom standing on the rock. Oh, that's good. Now, <laughs> when you taught school, did you carry a switch or anything for the no, kids? No. Okay. No. Uh, some of the I teachers just used I had to did. do this, you know, one of those. <laughs> that's all it took. <laughs> that's huh? all it took. So I think we're going to close out uh, yes. chapter two. Chapter two. And we're going to uh, have another fun day in the sun, I hope, this time, because it's mighty cold here this morning. Yeah, but Pondville changes with the seasons, and so do we. Okay. And, yeah. We've weathered it this far. We kid. have forged ahead, as did our <laughs> forebears. So. And we have put Kathy into the cold, into the woods. Yes. Put her near a running water. I mean, you know, all those things. Yeah. She's a good scout, and we appreciate it. Now, what are we going to cover next some of time. the items next time? Well, <clears throat> Katie, we'll start at Pondville Cemetery next time. Good. Sound like a plan? Beautiful wrought iron gate that says Pondville Cemetery, donated by Charlie Sharon yep. Jr. There were two Charlie Sharons. I never knew that. Oh, yes, the Senior old Senior and Junior. Junior owned my house. 1972, he donated that sign to the Pondville Cemetery, and it will beckon us to go right into the cemetery and take yet another tour and back we'll see the into history. The what's called now the Eisner House. Um, when I was there, of course, it was the Carlson, the Carlson House. House up so on we'll see that. Everett Street. Yes. We'll visit the um, oh the railroad, railroad station. Yes. And uh, where the house that was up on the hill is now uh, on Hill Street. Yes. So there'd be some interesting things to see in Charlie the next Sharon chapter. Charlie Sharon liked to move houses. He did. He yes. had that thing about houses. He liked. He moved mine back, as we know. The freight house that's on Hill Street used to be over by the 
Conville Railroad Station, which we'll visit next time. Of course, Mrs. Sharon, when she would come home, the house wouldn't be there. Well, she moved. never <laughs> knew. And just as a little grabber, on Hill Street, the stone abutments that I plan on never allowing to be, dis to be dismantled, Mary Gould, who lives on Everett Street, was so excited to have a sign made yes. looking just like it was back in the railroad days saying Pondville. Good. And we will have wonderful pictures of that. She was so excited, she ran right in my house. It was late, it was dark, and she said, you have to come see what I've done. <laughs> okay. And up we went and she shone her um, headlights on the sign. It looked beautiful. There you go. Pondville. So, there we are. Okay, All right, folks, thank Off you very much for watching. And again, we want to thank Katie Orders for traipsing along with us and NCTV in general for allowing this to be shown. And uh, I think we'll wait till next time. Thanks, Good Richard. job. You and remember, an we've job. come a long way from that <laughs> August day when you, Paul, and I sat in my kitchen. That's true. And I That's said, true. tell me about Pondville. Uh -huh. Now I'm telling folks, huh? <laughs> You've done a good job. Amen. Okay.